In this quick tip, I want to show you guys how you can improve the meshing of your fluid simulations. So in this example, we are looking at the particle fluid surface node and pretty much the default settings on that node. What it gives you is very blobby looking simulations, very blobby looking water. And depending on the situation, depending on what you're doing, this node might be great for meshing. It's really good for crown splashes. It's really good for times when you have, let's say, 20 million particles or more to go over. But it does not do a good job when your particle count is low and when you have a scene like this. We're trying to create a waterfall that goes down over these rocks. And in my opinion, the particle fluid surface doesn't really handle that situation very well. So you'll want to do your own fluid meshing. And we can achieve that through a variety of VDB operations. Just as a fair warning, as with anything that is related to fluid simulations, this is not beginner friendly. This is more of a intermediate to advanced quick tip. So you've been warned. But what is the main game plan for making this work? Well, here we have about four and a half million particles. That's on the lower side for a fluid simulation like this. So what we're going to do is start off by creating an attribute called density. And we're going to rasterize density into a fog volume. So from density, we turn that into a fog. And specifically, we're going to use the rasterize from attribute SOP because of the fact that we have a lot of control over the filtering of that, and we have the ability to use velocity to stretch out the fog shape for every single particle. That kind of gets around the lower particle count that we have right here. So each one of these particles, if this is a particle right here, it's going to be stretched out into this kind of shape right here. And it'll basically look like we've laid a bunch of strings as the fluid moves around. So it, it's kind of this cool look where it's like there's a bunch of uh, almost like clay tubes laid on top of each other. And so that's what we're looking for to start things off. One other thing that we'll do to aid in creating those tube shapes is we're going to use a trail sop on every single particle. So if we have all these particles right here, the trail sop is going to create more particles in the direction where it came from. And that's going to help us cover more ground and get us to those higher particle counts to make up for such a lightweight fluid sim. So the combination of the motion blur and the trail sop is going to give us those shapes. Now once we have a fog volume, we're going to turn that into an SDF. And the cool thing about turning it into an SDF is that we have all kinds of VDB operations to help us shape that volume exactly how we want it to be. And so we can use SDF smoothing, we can uh, use a dilation, we can cut into it with noises, we can do all kinds of really cool things with SDF operations, and then once we're happy with that, we finally turn it into a polygon mesh. And that becomes our final result. So that's mostly what we'll be covering here today. More specifically, let's go node by node. So to start things off, you always want to trim off particles you don't need. Meshing does take a lot of time. So again, only use what you need here. That's what's happening with this delete. And next up, we have a retime SOP. This retime SOP is going to figure out all the subframe positions of every single particle. And so, that's really nice when we go to use the trail sop because it tells the trail sop exactly where to place each particle. If you don't have this, then it won't know where to place the particles when we go to do that operation. But once we have those subframes made with the retime, then we're safe to use the trail sop. So this will take a second right here. I believe I'm using about five or six points. So at five points, we're now at about 21 million particles which is more ideal for meshing a fluid surface. Once we have that, we set our density, and then we finally hit the volume rasterization. For this part, let's actually make this from scratch. So 
I will create a volume rasterize attributes SOP right here. We want to rasterize density. And by default, we're going to have a big old blob of fog. And so we end up with a poofy cloud-like situation right here. What I found works pretty well is to take the voxel size, so copy this parameter, paste as a relative reference to the particle size, and then I'll multiply this times, let's say 0.5 or 0.25, something that's smaller. In this case, let's, let's try times 0.25 and that will leave us with something like this, which is great. Now, what's really cool is that once we have this, we're eventually going to take that and convert it to an SDF. So just to show you that, VDB converts, and we want to convert from a fog to an SDF. It's not going to look great at first, but if we change this fog ISO value to something really low, like 0.025, as you can see, now we're starting to get that shape that was generated by the fog. This obviously is too low in resolution, so for the voxel size, let's set that to 0 0.05 and see what that does. And also on the fog ISO value, you might need to go really low until you end up with something like this. That gives us these little, almost like streaks of particles. You can kind of see the shape begin to happen and that's what we get by using the trail sop. Now, if we add a little bit of velocity blur to this, so we check that on, and we change the shutter here to something high, like three as an example, then what you'll notice is that we now start really getting these streaks of where the particle is heading. And we start getting the direction that particles are moving in. So that's really, really cool. Now, Eventually, we're going to smooth this and do a few more operations, but just to kind of show you uh, where this is going, the last step, as I mentioned, is to convert back to polygon. So, VDB converts, and we are going to turn this into polygons. And as you can see, we get some of these uh, streaks, or we get this shaping here for the direction that the particle was moving in. So that's what's really cool about this technique in general, specifically when you use this volume rasterize attributes SOP. Now, you'll probably want to also add a bit of filtering to this. So I'm going to turn up the filtering size here to a value of two, and that's going to sort of smooth over that rasterization. So it'll take a minute to think about it, but now, as you can see, we have a much smoother shape as a result. That might be a little bit too aggressive. You'll have to kind of fine tune of what that needs to be. But the combination of the velocity, the filter size, and some SDF operations is going to give us everything we need for where we want to go. In my original simulation, I cached out the fog volume, and this is what it looks like when I converted it back into an SDF. So, this is what I had. From an SDF, you can then use SDF operations. So in this case, I'm going to dilate, in other words, move that SDF outwards, and then I'm going to cut into it with a noise. So here we have an SDF volume noise. And what's really awesome about this noise is that it adds a ton of really small, fine details, which is really important if you're trying to uh, increase the scale of this simulation, make it look big. You want a bunch of tiny little details so that this feels more like a waterfall and less like a close-up on a small little stream of water. So on this SDF, what I'm basically doing is I'm cutting into those values. I'm, I'm, I'm almost picturing like carving shapes into this puffed out version of the simulation. So the way that you carve into an SDF is by setting the displacement here to closest points, the range values to positive, and what I've done here, in addition to that, is stretched out the noise shapes. So on this element scale, you'll notice that I have zero in the Y, and I have eight in Z. And so that creates these bands that go vertically. And so if you really wanna see that, before this all gets converted, you can use a noise, so an attribute noise right here, on the particles themselves, 
an effect color. So if you set a noise right there and we affect color, we can then dial in exactly how we want that to be. So just so you can see this, if I go two, zero, and eight, that kind of gives us these shapes right here. And that looks very much like the waterfall uh, sort of pattern that I like to see. Now, in order to get around this looking like a noise, you can use a really fast animation and nobody will be really able to tell, unless they have a trained eye, <laughs> that uh, there was a noise applied to this that's not moving with the particle motion. So with the pulse duration, if we set this to, let's say, uh, 0.25, um, that will move the noise around really quickly. And again, you won't be able to really tell that a noise isn't following the exact motion of the particles. But as we carve into the waterfall, we end up with this kind of shape. We then smooth out the shapes a little bit like this. And then that becomes the final meshed version that we see right here. After that, I do recommend setting down a clean sop getting rid of any sort of extra islands that you don't need. So you can use, let's say, the manifold only topology option. Set that primitive threshold to a really high value so that it gets rid of any small little bits of particles that might have escaped. And then that can become your meshed fluid. I hope you've enjoyed this quick tip. If all of that was too much for you, then do check out my more beginner-friendly courses like Houdini for the New Artist 1 and 2. And I also offer one-on-one -on -one mentorships if you guys are trying to expedite your specific Houdini goals. So you can find all of that at cgforge.com. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.